Okay, we'll, we'll look to get started. Can everyone see the presentation? I've done these before and I've gone on and no one can see them. Everyone can see them okay? Yeah, can see okay. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you everybody for attending this evening. Um, the uh, third of the these training sessions that we've had. We've already had one around business and, and looking at how to look at business strategy. Last month, we had a great session and a guest from uh, Core Social Media around social media and how to engage on that platform. And this evening's one is about uh, the art of window displays and how to look at window displays uh, and make the most of them as well. Bless you, Susie, I did see that. Um, for the people that are watching uh, this outside of that, um, there will be opportunity to ask questions and you will have my email address if there's anything that comes up that you'd like to ask questions about. Um, to let everybody know how the kind of session works, this is, I will go through kind of an open uh, 20 minutes or so presentation on around thoughts and processes and the feedback that I've had around window displays and different areas of it um, will then bring that into uh, more of an open Q&A session. Uh, this is a very interactive session. If the more interactive we can be, the better. So if people do have something they would like to say uh, or any questions at all, then do feel free to ask uh, and put your hand up or just interrupt me because I can't see everybody on the screen. Um, so if someone has got a question, then then do ask. It is your session to get out of it what you will. Um, so please make sure that you do ask those questions and get out of it. The one thing I would say is none of us know everything. Uh, and if you're thinking it, somebody else might well be as well. Um, I've already got some questions I'll so into the presentation but the more that we ask the more that we'll learn um, there is no one size fits all approach at all to anything in life um, so some of the suggestions are just that their thoughts and suggestions that are based off of what you could look at doing with your store everyone's store is uh, different and everybody will have a different opportunity and a view of it as well so the different more different views that we get the better um, so just to give you a bit of an overview, um, my name is Dave Christie. Um, I am a qualified business coach and mentor. I have worked with brands for over 25 years. I, I know, doesn't look like it, but uh, I am that old. Um, uh, that's okay, Cheryl, not too much laughing, thank you. Um, I have worked with a number of brands over a number of years. I've worked through a lot of channels, worked through, um, started off working in malts and, and brands and working with brands uh, through nutrition, through sports nutrition, um, then coaching and mentoring uh, independent shops and stores, um, Faith in Nature being one, Chickpea, um, food and drink brands, soap brands, um, Shower Blocks, Little Soap Company, quite a few. Um, I've worked alongside all of the uh, telemarketing companies and the field sales teams as well uh, as doing some work with NOPE as a speaker at the same time. So I've got some experience and well-rounded experience. Also the wonderful thing as a 45 year old male, I haven't actually got an ego. So that's important when I really understand and have a craving to learn and listen to other people's views and learn from other people and develop those views as well. There, as I said, there is no one size fits all. So I'm very open to uh, listening and facilitating those conversations as well. Um, I do have some very strict rules about these presentations. Um, one is that participate. I encourage everybody to participate and get involved. Um, and secondly, is really say anything. There is no stupid question. Uh, everyone's at a different learning journey. Everyone's at a different place in their development in there. And those people who have been in, in business, we're well, talking already this morning, to this afternoon for a month, and some people 25 years. Um, so there's a real breadth of knowledge and experience there and, and outside of it as well. So please do say anything and enjoy it. You know, we are all using this in our own time. We're looking to learn and develop, but we can't have a little fun along the way. What's the point? Um, the uh, the agenda is we're going to look through the importance of window displays. We'll go through the power of attraction and how to try and look and attract through windows. Some of the pros and cons about different areas of the window displays as well. Um, finding a balance between how and what we display and some of the technologies that are around that. Um, looking a little bit at attracting new customers. And then looking at some food and drink trends for 2024, um, the basis around this is obviously then just looking at what the what mainstream consumers 
are, are very interested in at the moment and that might help sway us when we're looking to attract those new customers and, and utilize our shop windows as well and then we'll conclude with some questions and answers um i have taken a random selection of pictures uh, off the internet as they are readily available if your store is on there and you're happy then great if not then let me know and i will change those pictures but um i don't know who's on here from what store so there are uh, some pictures along the way and some stories along the way as well so we shall get started with the importance of uh window displays so the the main areas that we're looking at when we're looking at the window displays is to do what we're we're trying to tell a story we're trying to attract people that are walking past the store uh, and engage with them through merchandising or a shop window to entice them to our store um, people will do this in many different guises and different ways uh, I know people that have painted the outside of their shop like a cow um, just to get the eye to turn towards that store for that split second and that moment. We don't have a lot of time when we're engaging with people walking past. It's no different to social media. It's no different to engaging anybody's attention at the moment. We have a very limited amount of time to engage people as they, as they pass our stores. But we have that theatre and that opportunity um, to do that and to engage them, to draw the eye to bring in new customers, to inform existing customers, and maybe even do a bit in the community as well along the way. Um, we can utilize these things for seasonality and themes. So we, we see a lot of uh, stores and shop fronts that have utilized different themes, um, making sure that it's the right theme for the right customer at the right time. We've picked up on the last two sessions a little bit around identifying who your ideal customer is. Uh, and how to talk about them and building almost that client uh, and customer persona. I think that's really in an, an interesting part to just pick up on again slightly. Knowing who you're trying to attract is going to be massively important. If we're trying to attract 45 plus females, we'll talk very much differently to 18 to 24 year old uh, uh, population. Uh, we'll also talk differently if it's male, we'll also talk differently if it's more affluent or less affluent, and we'll also engage with people if they are looking for specific things. So, for example, you might be looking to attract particularly things, you might have a large supplement section, and you might be looking to attract people that have got health and wellness interest uh, and disposable income, then you need to think about who that person is, how they take in their information, what wording and, and and what you can do within your window to attract those people you might have more food and drink based business uh, and actually you know you want to be doing more sampling you want to be attracting people in a different manner as well and you'll use slightly different tones tonality tone of voice looks and feels to try and attract those customers in as well um, so knowing who you're trying to talk to is is vitally important um when we're looking at our windows, we're all, we're trying to do one of two things. As I said, we're trying to talk to our existing customers and show them perhaps some new stuff that's in store, or we're trying to attract new customers in. And we're trying to utilize perhaps either brands that people will know, um, brands that people didn't know that you had in store, or actually offer to offers that people don't know as well. It's difficult to see through stores. Um, people don't normally see all the way through to the back. And we can do one or two things that we'll come on to in, in, in a bit with, uh, with regards to that window. But that's the essence of what we're trying to achieve there. So you'll highlight your best sellers in the front window and then you'll stock your best sellers in the back of the shop so that people have to walk all the way through to go and find them. Um, that is, that's the, the, the story that we're trying to tell as we're, as we're bringing people through the store. That is a really important stat. Uh, it's when you look at different areas and different um, data points, this number varies very little. Uh, it is such a high number uh, of customers that will enter based off of something that they see as they walk past that window. So the attractiveness of your window display is that important. That is a large number and it hasn't moved for about a decade. Um, it is extremely important to uh, make sure that we're attracting the right customer. And then that goes back to the right customer. Um, and anyone in reality is the right customer because there's something in your store for everybody, but who is the main person you're trying to attract? What's the biggest opportunity that you have to attract people into the store? Um, it's, it, it, it's a real message to think about. 
The pros of a window display, obviously, um, is it enhances the visibility of what you have in your store. It enhances the offering of what you have in your store. Um, it builds a real um, memory bank of customers when they're walking past your shop every day and see that same brand repeatedly. Um, they're remembering it. They're remembering the products that are in there. They're remembering the offering that's in there. So this is why you'll find large supermarkets, et cetera, will change their offering around all the time because they'll still they'll always lead with the big brands and then they'll change the store around. So you've got to try and find them. Um, it's it's clever marketing that allows customers to then unforget the route they normally take and have to find a new route around stores to look around what um, where they're looking for. So when you're thinking about how to illustrate the brand personality and build that brand recall, again, there's two sides to think about here. One is your existing customer, and we'll, we'll kind of draw to both of them. What is going to entice your existing customer in? Is that have you got a your best seller has got a new brand product has got a new range out? Is there something new that you're offering to your current customer base um, that you want them to see as they come past to jog their memory to come back into store? Maybe you've got fresh product that's coming in from a local supplier maybe the 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 biggest supplement brand has got a new range out that you think would be really enticing um maybe it's something seasonal as we've talked about that you might want to think that people don't know that's in your store that's the main essence what isn't what people don't know is in your store should be in your shop window to entice them and then from a, a new customer perspective what what is that new customer that's walked past your store for two years, three years, six months? What is that message? What is that product? What is that offer that's going to entice them in? Is it a, a promotion? Is it a sampling event? Is it a trial of a product? Or is it a service that you offer that they may not know? You know, we, we live in a world where a lot of people buy products online now, but they don't get that one-to-one -one service. They don't get that bespoke understanding of what it is they might need and, a, and then an offering of a suggestive offering of what might actually be beneficial to them so how can you um how can you put that message across in a shop window that shows people that they could be wasting money on buying things online that don't work and maybe coming into store and chatting with an expert with x amount of years experience would actually be able to save them money and perhaps save them time as well um, those are the two commodities that when we're attracting new customers are they're most interested in value and time and value is money time quality uh, product that works um, something they don't have to shop around for there's many different things that come around value but fundamentally it's something that's going to want to make somebody stop have some kind of emotive response and come in and inquire or at least you'd be able to tell a message to for then them to pop in on a on a lunch break on a time where they can pop in and go actually that's interesting i want to find out more um you want to draw those people into the store so but at sampling as i said is a great one to work because who doesn't like a freebie um opportunities to trial products or sample products or have a free health check um at the moment i've seen some stores recently um in, in Manchester where I was just last week doing free health checks in store and people were coming in because they were having trouble not getting through to their doctors. I don't know who's happy with their, seeing their doctor at the moment, but I know it's not exactly the easiest time to get hold of people at the moment and doctors and pharmacies will just try and sell you the thing that gets the most profit because they don't know what they're talking about much either. So actually maybe there's, there's an opportunity there to to have people come in and talk to you about what their problems are and, and actually you be able to suggest something to them. Um, obviously, it's uh, making sure that you're not claiming that you're a GP or a health professional uh, with qualifications, unless, of course, you are. But actually, we're finding that a lot of stores are trying to diversify how they and what they offer to new customers to try and get them into store by understanding what the pain points are for customers that aren't coming in currently and seeing if they can offer something similar. Uh, we've had other stores, as an example, talking about boost walk-ins um, that have started to work with local makers markets or food markets that are around the area and ask and give offering them a small shelf in store or a concession in store so that they can then bring in their customers into your shop. So then by advertising out that you've got local product in or a local business in, or if you give a local brand a week in your shop, as an example, and rotate that round, um, they'll help bring people in and it shows 
that you're working with local businesses, which is something that is really important to customers as well. There are obviously downsides to window displays, and there can be um, many of those as well. Uh, no, no bigger one probably than the amount of time it takes to do a window display uh, and the amount of times that we might have to change a window display um, to make them most beneficial. Um, we have such a small window space there that how do we get across some of this messaging that we're talking around? Um, do we fill our window up with posters so no one can see in the store? Um, do we have our windows clear so that the inside of our store is our shop window? Do we do a hybrid of the two? Do we hang things from it? What do we do? It's, uh, it's a, it is lots of different options to trial. And I think that trial is something that we need to try and build into our strategy around, around window displays. There is no one size fits all. Um, but what I would say is that many brands um, have many bits of POS that they'd love you to put in their window. Not all of them have been thought through well enough to help you on what you want to achieve from your window display. Um, I'm going to come to the floor in a second and ask people what some of the wonderful and not so wonderful bits of window display merch that you've had support wise from brands. But also, I would also think around if you do have relationships with any brands, telling them what you want. A lot of people can do bespoke pieces of kit. A lot of people can you know, open close signs as an example, brands love to do, but I think everyone's got one of those now. So if there are things that you that spark you from today's meeting or, or conversations that we have later, don't be afraid to go and ask the brands for that kind of support because they will do it. A lot of them will help and support you. They want that feedback. So this isn't something that you have to fund necessarily. This is not something you have to think about it wholeheartedly. Utilize your brands, your brand partnerships, your brand relationships, because there's nothing that brands would like to do more than build that relationship with you. And if they can support you, and in turn it supports them with, a, with something, they're going to be more than helpful to do that as well. So that will take away some of those cons. Um, but obviously you need to have regular updates and as we all know, things that stay in a window don't stay the same colour in the window for too long either. Um, so it's also making sure that we do have that rotation in it and our windows always look fresh and new um, and, and the best version of us. That is the first impression that people do get from us as well. There is a balance between the approach that we're using for window displays. Um, we've started to see the use of QR codes in windows as well to give more information around business and brands. Um, there are lots of people now that are utilizing technology. Um, I actually saw some electronic window displays um, in Liverpool uh, when I was there a couple of weeks ago. I'm not suggesting that everybody rushes out and does that, but it just but everyone's trying to grab the attention and the eye of the consumer as they're walking past the stores. But the, the QR code is probably the easiest one to um, to engage with customers with. People are very used to using QR codes in so many different formats now, in store, in leaflet, at work, um, on courses, wherever it might be. Um, that a QR code that maybe you work alongside either your own website or a brand that gives them more information about why they should buy that product or what the benefits of those products are. Um, getting them to scan those QR codes, as I said, is something that people are used to doing. And it might be something to also utilize and think about as well. Does anyone use QR codes at the moment? Excellent. So that's an opportunity potentially to trial stuff. Um, as I said, I wouldn't go out of your way to go, right, that's it, everything's going to have a QR code on it today and I must go and do it and it's going to be the thing that changes the, the game. But actually, I think you'll be surprised actually with a QR code on there and, and a find out more or a competition or something that drives people to it. It's another way of adding that, we talked about that complex information and getting that information across to customers that they will engage with your window. They will engage with your shop a little bit as well. Uh, and maybe something that you can bring in store at the same time on shelf. Brands are starting to think about QR codes for brand information that doesn't lead to their website because we don't want them doing that, um, but does lead to an education page or a landing page or give them more information. Um, and actually it's not something that you couldn't, then lead them to your website if you have one of those at the same time as well. Um, so there is opportunity for that at the same time. But it's also thinking about then if you've got what you've got in your shop window, does that match up with what you're doing on your social media? Is there opportunity to, to make sure that's all utilised in the right manner so that your 
expanding that message across and again thinking about that story and that customer journey if they see it in the store and then they see it on the website then they're more likely to come into the shop uh, and when they do come in they'll have seen things already whether they consciously or subconsciously remember that it's something that's embedded in them because they've seen it a number of times as well um i know certain stores are very good at telling that message across social media and having the same message several times that then also fits in with what's going on so that when someone comes into their shop, the thing they've been talking about on social matches it. Um, keeping that story all the way through for the consumer is really important. So I don't try and say too much, but have have that message so that when a customer comes in, they're, they're, they're continuing the story that they've seen in shop, then on the shelf, then at the back of the shop, then at the till, um, that allows them to, to purchase what it is that you would like them to go to purchase first. But it is telling them the stories. Facts tell, stories sell uh, is the phrase that is used quite often. Um, and that story for customers starts wherever their, their interaction with you starts, social media or a shop window. Um, does anyone use social media already to line up with what's going on in store? They use social media? We, a few hands, a few hands raised. Anyone got any examples of what they've done on that at all? So any successes, any learnings? Oh, it sounded like someone was going to say something, but it was just someone teasing me with a little bit of a mic on. Okay, um, I, I will give you a couple of examples. So there is a, a shop up near me in, in um, Cheshire that actually ran a competition with a brand um around a sampling event that they were going to have on in store they put a small section of a shop window dedicated to them that showed people that sampling was going to happen the brand also produced a bespoke poster that went in that didn't just say sampling here it asked a couple of questions for people so it asked them are you do you suffer with aches and pains or do you have digestive issues when you um when you eat a large meal um and and so they just asked a couple of leading questions. They then focused that back on their social media. And then they ran a sampling campaign in store the following week. So it all succinct up. They didn't have to change the whole shop window. They just changed an element of it that they gave it to the brand. Um, and then when people came into store, they, they continued that conversation. Which, is, which, are the, which of the elements did you think about? So they continued that questioning. So you went through social media. It was on, they, they had a web shop as well. It was on their website. Um, the brand did all the work for it and they gave all, all the POS for it. And then when the customer came into store, they'd seen it in, again in the shop window and were then asked, and then were given the sample. So the story came all the way through. Uh, and then because of that shop window and people coming into the store, they had about 25% on the day of customers that hadn't come into the store before. Um, and that was due to one, the, the succinct story to the messaging and the questions that people were being asked for the week that they walked past the shop. Um, people said they, they, it piqued their interest because they had always had a niggle. They had always had a bit of digestive issues and that basically they were intrigued when it said you don't have to put up with it. Um, it's not something you just put up with. So it was the right element of questioning. And then when they were in store, then they then had the brand expert in there as well as the shop owner who was able to guide them towards the product that they actually wanted. Interestingly, out of the products, that, the people that came into the store, only half of them actually bought the products that they came into trial. As it turned out, when they came in and, and had a further conversation, the, there were other products in the store that the shop owner felt that was probably more likely to help them and support them in what they were talking around, but they were able to start that conversation. And that's really where it all begins. It's starting that conversation. It's getting out, getting somebody in that door to start that conversation. And that starts in that shop window. That is that is the beginning of the conversation. It's um, I run a, a program called Two Steps Back. And what we do is we look at taking that two steps back out of your business because one isn't quite far enough. Put yourself into a customer perspective. Walk, Go for a walk around around the village, around the high street, come back, but not as the shop owner, not as somebody that works in that store, but just as a customer. Just walk past some of the shops and start looking at what piques your interest, what grabs your attention. And then when you get to your store, does yours? If you were somebody who didn't know anything about health or, or health and wellness or hadn't been in your store before, 
Is there something in the window that would entice you in? Is there something there that talks to you? If not, that's a very good place to start. So we, we touched on right at the beginning around t uh, the, the point of the window is of, of attracting new customers. So again, first of all, again, it's about understanding that target customer demographic. So who is your ideal customer? What is that? Are they young? Are they old? Are they male? Are they female? Are they, are they affluent? Are they coming in just at the weekend? Are they popping in during the week? Um, and then what else do they like other than coming into your shop? Maybe you've got current customers and you know what the average customer is. Maybe they're mid fifties and, and, and they come in regularly and there's four or five people that are very similar. Uh, that becomes your customer persona. Normally one of your favorite customers if you think about your favorite customer, the one you get on with, the one that shops the most in your shop, what are they like? Are they happy? Are they are they engaging? What do they do? Where do they go? That's the kind of person that you're trying to attract into your shop. And that's probably a good place to start when you're thinking about an ideal persona. It's probably where your best customer is. It's the person you like the most, that buys, buys your products, install the most, that listens to your listens and engages when you talk to them. And then how and what maybe around asking them what would attract you into the store what attracts you when you come into the shop you need to ask questions to your customers they are your the feedback that you need um and they probably are as invested in your shop to a degree as you are um they probably love coming into your shop because everybody is engaging and friendly and they get that great chat and advice that they get there so any support they can give it makes them feel really important as well oh i was asked about uh x or i was asked a question about this um, or uh, it makes them feel really nice and part of the community and part of what you're trying to offer as a store as well so definitely ask your current customer basis what would attract you what are the things that attract you when you come into the shop what do you like most about the store when was the last time you got that feedback from your customers and just had an open conversation what what annoys you the most about the shop we have to be open and honest and be ready for ready for feedback but actually finding out the things that annoy your customers the most is probably the, a, a, a nice place to think about asking questions at the same time so that we can strengthen our offering Oh, I really wish you had this here or, or whatever. And it helps, again, with that new customer journey at the same time. But also, if you if, it, if, they, if the same customers are highlighting two or three things that's really important to them about your shop and what they love most, then that's the place to start with your shop window. Maybe that's the offering of actually saying, actually, we our customers love whatever it is. Um, come in and ask us about it or, 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 or highlighting that as a champion. People will always... Um, buy from strangers reviews i don't know who's who watches movies does people watch movies on netflix and stuff on here when was the last time we all watched that one star movie that was on netflix <laughs> well we went to that we went to that restaurant that had like one review uh that was a three star we're not going there we're not going there we're not watching those movies people will buy we live in a world where people buy for reviews and your shop window can be your review you know, we you can say uh, quotes on your window about why people come in. You can then segue that through your social media. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that attracts new customers. There will be people that have walked past your shop for months and maybe even years. They've never walked in because you've never given them a reason to. So think about how you might be able to do something with them. Can you stand outside the shop for an hour and do it on a, on a busy Saturday or a, probably not, but can you do something during the week when it may be a little quieter and, and see the people you'll see the faces, you know, the faces that keep going past a shop that you see every day, going to get their lunch or go into a particular cafe or coffee shop that never come in. Maybe go to that cafe and coffee shop and do something in tangible with them. Maybe I'll give them a discount code or ask them to come in or sit in there with them and say, oh, I'll buy you a cup of coffee if you if you give if you come into my shop. I've got something really interesting that I would like to get your opinion on. Everyone likes to give an opinion. That's a that's an interesting way to get them in the store. And you know, then you're getting the feedback that allows you to understand what in your area or region might attract more people. Then you can start thinking about how that looks like in the in that shop window as well. Because what we want is more people coming through the door and more feet in the shop, more money in the till, um, and more people talking about your 
your business as well. So if you can think about maybe how do I get someone to take a photo of the front of my shop? How can I get them to post that out there? How can I get someone to tag it in? All of the things that we do are all succinct, but we send, tend to work them in silos. We'll think about the shop window as one thing, social media as another, stock as another, but actually all interlinks together and all, and all tells a story. Um, I'm going to go on to food trends in a minute. Um, I'm just going to come out of this presentation a second, uh, he says. Uh, have I come out of this presentation? No. Excellent. Yes. There we go. We're out of the presentation a second. We said we'd go through for the first kind of part around the shop windows. I know that was a bit of a whistle stop tour and I could see people making notes and I could see people look like they had some questions along the way. Before we go anywhere else, can anyone, has anyone got anything around their current shop windows and any questions that they've got around that to start with. When I look at that, then kind of look at any questions that have come up during this, anything that brands have worked with you on that have been really good or really bad. Um, and then we'll have a look at some trends because those, those trends about what consumers are looking for will help you divide what, what you need to, what you could put in your shop windows as well. Does anybody want to start? Oh, <laughs> I'll start, uh, Dave, uh, as a non-retailer. Sorry to butt in. <laughs> oh, yeah, <that's> it. <laughs> but the thing that I'm quite interested in as a, an observer and a shopper is how retailers view the sort of difference between the brands provided materials, which look very slick often, but can look a bit like the store's been hijacked and can be a little bit sort of samey uh, compared to the sort of more creative hand or sort of personally thought through handmade windows, what achieves the better results? I'm just intrigued as uh, I, I can see the extra work and, you know, you don't necessarily have all the time creative people in store. Just wondered how those two things work. Has anyone got some views on that? Anyone, anyone got some feedback on at all? Mm, I, I tend to think that like some of the more personalized windows attract people in we've recently gone into more like lifestyle we've got crystals yoga all different stuff that we're um we've brought into the shop that we haven't had before we've expanded it and just by putting a lot of that stuff in the window um creating a really nice display it has drawn so many people in they didn't know we had it even though we've had it in there for six eight months and we've got such a younger generation, a whole new um, different sort of spectrum of customers that are coming in by us just displaying that and actually wanting stuff out of the window. Like, can you get me that out of the window? So I've noticed a real um, sort of difference with that, with making it more personal um, in that sort of sense. Yeah, that's a, that's a good bit of feedback, Sean. Thank you for that. And I think you're right. I think, you know, you have, you've trialled things and that's the important thing at the same time. As you said, you've had products in the city in, the, in there for eight months and thought, well, actually, I'll put it in the shop window and it's attracted to a different set of customers for you to come in. And that's a, that's a great story to tell on that. Did you used to have branded stuff in the window, the generic boxes and posters? Yeah, so generally... Uh, we, we have a bit of a mixture really it depends like with seasonal stuff if it's like valentine's obviously we'd make up a window with stuff that we would think you know mm -hmm. would be ideal presents things like that but just the, on this occasion i've been working there for two years and this has been like massive like just putting that in the window has made such a difference um especially because it's slightly different to what we've always been selling so it has been bringing in people that are just coming to like buy that and then they'll see what else we sell and so many people have said we didn't even know that, that you were here we just saw your window um so yeah i've just seen a massive impact um on that that particular stuff especially um, besides what we're normally putting in like the supplements and things like that food stuff we don't generally get to put too much in because we don't have like dummy stuff to display unless it's chocolate it's like bougie bougie or something we've got dummy boxes that we use but it can be yeah, a bit tricky to advertise the food the health food and and um things like that 
Yeah, that's a, that's a really nice story, Sherlock. I can see you got your hand up. I'll come to you next. Um, I think what's really interesting Sean, about that, and it's something that I've heard from a few people as well, is they've thought about what gifting options they can put in the window because it's the gifting options and that impulse purchase that people are going, oh, I'm, you know, they can instantly see who might want that or something different rather than what they generically think of as a health food store that's going to mm. have every shop window's got tea in it uh, of some description because the tea companies love a, love a display and it's like, well, actually, is tea going to entice people into the shop or is mm. it something else? So I, I love that example, uh, Sean. I thank you for sharing that. Cheryl. Sean, I want to ask you a question. Do you have a picture of this successful window? Not that you can share with us right now. I don't imagine. Yeah, you I, hand, yeah, but... I do. I have a, I have a few pictures. We did two actually. One sort Fantastic. of for autumn, and then one around Christmas. If you could send them to Dave or to um, uh, Avril at the Trade Association, and then we can share them around because there's nothing yeah. like a, a window we know is a winner. Um, yeah, yeah. Copy. I I struggle, Dave, because um, you know I love doing windows, and I love you know we've got the space, and we, you know there's loads of stuff. And I sway from those windows that you get from, you know, Vogel and from other companies that have got some really nice, beautiful, slick things. And providing they're ailment orientated, I tend to go with those because I know that people see menopause or they'll see, you know, headaches or, or whatever the, the theme is. Sorry, not usually headaches, but um, they'll have a theme and then people will come in and say, oh, I saw the thing in the window about the menopause. Can I talk to you about the menopause? But some you don't always want to do an ailment window. Sometimes you want to do something... Uh, you know more like you, your own personality and I always panic I come out the window or somebody else has done the window in the team and I come back and I think oh god do we look like a charity shop is it like too <laughs> many products too many small <laughs> things and it's trying to avoid that because you know obviously we have some you know we've got new look and Holland Barra and you know there are some chain stores in Daventry that obviously have a very slick look and then you have the more independent stores and charity shops that sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between the charity shop and the independent. And I'm always very, I feel like we're tip, tiptoeing that line. So are there any rules of thumb of how many products is the maximum or you should have a color theme or I don't know, stuff like that. I think that, and thanks again for sharing that because that is a bit of a minefield and you're absolutely right. It's, it's what you, you want to put enough in that entices people, but not too much that no, no one can differentiate. Um, a, a classic example of that, if you used to go to like local cash and carries and stuff, people wanted to get visible in, in there. So they put these big luminous neon signs up with like buy two, get three free and all this. And then the next brand would do the same and the next one would do the same. So then nothing stood out at all because it all just blurred into one. The the rule of thumb, Cheryl, I would always go with is do the basics to the best of their best of their ability. So just keep things nice and simple. Um, I see people painstakingly painting windows for hours and hours and hours. And is it is it actually generating anything? I'm not I'm not so sure. Having a lovely that window is great, but does it is it adding value? You know, we've talked about making sure your front of your window looks professional and looks enticing. Yes. But what is that message you're trying to get across? So if we're coming up to you know, immunity, you know, you want to talk about immunity, then yes, you might want to have something that kind of talks around, talks to the person walking through past the window rather than talking at them. We've seen a very similar trait when when, when engaging even face-to-face -face or uh, trying to engage through email marketing or anything. Like people don't want to be talked at. They want to feel like, feel like they're being talked to. So asking questions on the front of the window or, you know, if you're talking about menopause, maybe you're asking questions or showing people that you don't have to suffer or there are options for you. Come in and discuss this. Because, you know, And it's almost trying to show the empathy of actually, you know, we we suffer, there is no need to suffer with X, Y, Z. And then someone goes, oh, yeah, I have that. Or do you wake up in the morning and you always have backache or joint ache? You don't have to. Come and talk to us about that. You know, it, and then theming it around certain areas, yes, I think is a clearer, cleaner message. Um, again, it's coming back to understanding who your target customer is. If, as Sean's talking about, she's got a younger uh, demographic in, then maybe talking around products that will add on to that in that shot, you know, would be really cool because you're introducing, she's introducing to crystals and other bits and pieces. What else can we add in for the basket spend that they can go, oh, now I've got you for crystals. What's the next thing that I can entice that same demographic in with? 
But if you've got an older generation that you know that people are coming in and, and going, oh, I didn't know you did menopause, or I didn't, what, thinking about what other big issues, you know, we talk about the food trends and the trends in a minute. Um, you know, the main four at the moment are hugely for the mainstream is, is sleep, uh, is menopause, it's brain fog is the biggest word I've heard, burnout, brain fog, all that kind of stuff, um, and digestion. So, and, and biome and, you know, looking at gut health and so on as well. So how can you as an independent shop offer something different, but still keep on the same topic? You have a, a, a unique skill set and, and, and because you are independent, you don't have to have the same message everywhere. You can in, interact with people and engage with it. But those four subjects, as an example, we know are being searched on Google the most, Amazon the most, being shopped in all the Holland and Barrett's and boots that you're talking about the most. So actually, and we all know, most of those products that they're buying are very good. Um, and they're full of awful things. So we also know that that sustainability and fillers and stuff like that is also an awareness. That's where the independent store and the independent brands come in because they can offer that. But again, you're it's, it's how do people know? How do you get, how do you get that knowledge? So you, less is more. If you can do it around a theme and then give people option, uh, two or three options. I always use this analogy. If I go to a restaurant and there is a, a book with 30 things in it, do I think that's a good restaurant? If I go there and they do six things, then I, I've said this before, you know, then I think, they do that very well. So you want to make sure that that offer, if you're doing a shop, is has got a couple of clear things that that will resonate with with the maximum amount of people possible. But less is more. I have a supplementary question. Um, we have a big window and then we have a small window and we tend to have different things in each one, one for upstairs and one for what's happening downstairs. But we always put one big, one theme in the big window. But I do know that many health food stores will have three themes or, you know, um, you know, met two or three themes in the window. Do you think it's good to have, you know, three different sort of well, messages or? Or I give you my answer. I'm going to open it up. Has anyone else got a thought on that at all? Has anyone else got two or three things in their shop window? Susie? So we've got um, two long windows and then two smaller windows and then the door in the middle. So I use the smaller windows either side of the door as a showcase. So we'll have two different things. And what I've said to the girls is that as you're walking, so we're in an alleyway, we're not on the high street. So display is absolutely everything for us uh, because we have to capture people going up to the village hall. Otherwise we don't get seen at all. So I've said that you need to have told your message from window one down to window four as at the speed that somebody can walk you need to have attracted them at window two and three so two and three have got to be really powerful where one and four the bigger windows are kind of the lead up so i found that with the generic material that um, we can get from brands so viridian's very good vogel's very good we use some of that but then blend it with maybe props so we've used um sun hats we've used fresh plants um you know we've just uh, honey let's say for echinacea cold season um so i've maybe got some super sized honey pots or whatever so we've kind of made it our own rather than a generic display um and what we found is that there need to be some bigger pieces rather than too many small pieces otherwise it looks a bit lost in 70s it needs to be a very clear and clean message literally at the sort of slow walking pace somebody needs to have kind of got my message as they've walked past thanks Susie. that's really really insightful and uh, yeah i would echo that i on a similar conversation i know the merchandise buyer at, um at whole foods in uh, and they do high street ken which is probably the most uh seen shop windows in in the uk to be fair and they say a very similar thing if you look at their messaging it's really clear bigger bigger objects less small objects because people can't see them at that pace that you talked about susie as well uh with with some kind of like come in message at the same time so yeah has anyone else got any experience at all anything that any share any thoughts on that point no 
Okay. Um, Joe, just to go back to your point as well, I can see your hand is back up. Uh, is it, I was a supplementary thought, Dave. Just, um, I'm just wondering if, uh, um, Susie, do you take photographs of your windows? Not often enough. I should have done on my Christmas one. We I was just so thinking, can you imagine having um, a database at the Health Stores UK of successful windows, ones that we've tried and tested that we know have worked? You know, they're not just pretty and, you know, aesthetically pleasing, but we know that they've drawn people in. If we could all send those windows in to Health Stores UK and we have a database, then you can just pull from it and copy one of those. That would yeah. be my dream come true. I like almost the template. I know we've all got different shapes of windows, but, you know, things that we could adapt. Um, I'd really like that. Yeah, I that's think, a good idea. I think that sharing ideas is something that's really important. You know, I think that you know, no one's reinventing the wheel here, but actually it's just sparking ideas. We can get very much into our own day to day. Um, mm -hmm. But also, I think that when you're talking about the like uh, windows that work, make sure that you are looking around your local high street and when you're going as well and looking at the things that attract you. If you run that shop, you're probably your ideal customer. So the things that are going to attract you might be the things that you think, actually, that, that's really interesting. And, and I think that there's a there's a thought process around that, around what is it that's, that's attracting you at the same time. But yeah, I like that database. Also, I think that we, we talked about the storytelling. How often do you take a picture of your shop window and put it on your social media and use it as your social media piece so that when someone sees your social media, then they walk past the shop, they get that, that connection because they've seen it and they go, oh, oh, okay. Oh, that's what that is. Or, oh yeah, I saw that because it's, it's more familiar. We're yeah, we, we do do that quite a lot, Dave. I'm not always proud of our windows, but, you know, the ones we'd like the best. And I tend to get the team out or one or two of the staff out so that there's people in the picture as well. So, yeah, we do do that quite a lot because, you know, I, I, it's funny. We You know, we've been there since 2016. So what's that? Seven, eight years this year? Seven, eight years. And um, you know, I know stores that have been there 40 years and people still go, I didn't know there was a health food store in Bristol. Or I didn't know there was that. So, you know, eight years isn't very long. So reminding people what we look like from the outside when, you know, I think we did some research. I think it's only about five or six percent of the population of the UK that actually shop in independent health food stores. So that means we've got a whole 94 percent of people to go for. So it's just reminding them what we look like and where we are. And I think I love that. And I think it's even worth taking it a step further because you'll find that although only that 5% shop in health food stores, 90% of them will walk past them and have preconceived conceptions over what those health stores are. We all know what the preconceived conceptions of a lot of people are around health food stores and health stores in general. So actually utilising your social media in front of store and walking people through the door and getting them used to walking through the door and seeing what is the other side of that magic window is also really important and, and part of that story as well. Starting it at the front, thinking about that customer journey as they walk past the shop, especially in your local area, maybe you said you know that you've been to that Coffee, local coffee shop and you start from the busiest coffee shop and say well, actually if you if you get your coffee here we are literally two minutes around the corner and, and walk them through your brands do this quite well when they get new listings uh in retailers they'll start at the front of the shop they'll do a little big big reveal hello look at me i'm in this shop and then they'll walk you through the shop so that they show you the journey to where you they want you to go um and it allows people to have that window past the window of what actually is behind what you're trying to message as well so it's all part of the story and it all joins together i like that there's something um i you know i'd have to get somebody younger to show me but there's something you can do on your phone where it speeds up the video so if i we've got a new arc cinema in daventry relatively new last 18 months and everybody's going to the arc cinema so if i did a video from the arc cinema to my shop which we're not the opposite side of town, but it's, you know, it's a five minute walk, but nobody's going to watch five minutes of video, are they? So I'd have to do it. So it's speeded up. There's a button, I imagine, somewhere on here that would show me how to do that. There is, but there is also this, um, I write this one down. Uh, there is a little website, G-O-O-G-L-E. It's called <laughs> Google. It's uh, quite a new website. If you literally type in how to 
and then it'll and then anything it will tell you the answers. So if you want to know how to speed up a video, it will. Nobody likes the smiles, Dave. No, it's, it's not about me. It's not sure about that at all. It's it's one of those things that's hidden in plain sight. We use Google every day. I'm the same, and I think and I don't. We don't use it enough to ask those kind of questions. But it's only as good as the questions that you ask. So if you do think exactly that, how do I speed up a video for Instagram? It will come up. I just ask anybody under twenty. <laughs> within the vicinity now i'll ask google you're quite right i'll do exactly google, that google does it without the attitude uh, <laughs> so i uh, think it's always a step in the right direction <laughs> um going back to to jim's point and just touching on that for a moment has anyone got any um experience or or uh, knowledge around brands that are doing things right with regards to support Window displays are a big thing and an expensive element. And as I said to you before, there are many brands out there that have POS. The bigger brands obviously have the POS, which is great because they're going to entice your existing customer in. But do they give the right message? Anything that helps and supports with that right message to engage and anyone that's willing to engage? Um, I think someone said it earlier that... Um... I, I think Avo will do a good job. They have quite like large dummy boxes that you can put in the window. And again, I think someone said like the larger, the better. So it's like large versions of their products. Um, and actually from what you've already said, like they ask questions, uh, which I didn't notice until you said it. They do ask questions um, like it might be a menopause window or something. Um, and I find that their POS is really helpful. And then someone said it earlier as well, Viridian um, tend to do really good stuff as well. And dummy bottles, that's always good because you don't want to put the actual bottles in the window and they get um, tarnished or damaged or anything. So Yeah, you obviously don't want to put the full-size ones in at all. And I think it's interesting when you think about, when you actually take a second to think about it and going back to things in plain sight, having a look at the displays you've got and thinking about how you can embellish them and how you might be able to ask an additional question or put something up that asks the question around the product that's behind it is really important. Debbie, you, you, you had your hand up as well for a second. I was going to say exactly the same as Sean. Um, my two favourites are Viridian and Vogel. Um, I sit down with my reps from both of those. I tell them what I've got coming up in the next couple of months. And then they tell me what POS that they've got that can go in my window. And that has gone really well for me when I can't come up with an idea myself. Um, they will say, ah, oh, have you seen this kind of point um, POS? And then I've been able to use that. So, yeah, I agree. Vogel and Viridian are really good for that. Okay, Susie, I'm coming to you in a second. So um, I have seen you, just to acknowledge that. Um, so a couple of things on, on that. If we, What we're saying is, how many, David, just as an interest while you're on the call, how many brands do you think you've got in store currently? Oh, more than two? Much more than two. Much more than two. <laughs> um, but they don't all give you as good service as Viridian and... Um, Vogel and I haven't got time to be contacting lots of brands and saying I want to sell your stuff whereas Vogel and Viridian they tell me they take away my pain which is I need to do my window I want to do it on sleep what can you do for me and they will go away and come back and tell me rather than me having to go out to these people and say I want this I want that that takes time in my brain to think about and I haven't got time in my brain. I've got too many other things to do. I want it easy. So that's why I like those particular brands. Okay. And I think this is why, and thank you for sharing that, because I think this is another reason why this is really important, because obviously Healthstore UK has got some really good partners at the same time as well, as well as the ones we've spoken about. I know having worked there for a number of years as well, that Faith in Nature, especially when I was there, but even now, even still very much, very much wants to support independence and the shop windows and stuff. And I know they actually hired local artists to paint re re uh, refill vans and paint actual shop window murals, um, which was a, which went down really well. Obviously there is not lots of funds to do that. And that was kind of a, you know, a, a campaign piece, but um, I think there's, it's really interesting to hear and, I, and other people nodding, obviously, we have got no time. Um, and actually, if there was a 
a, a list of brands that you knew could supply POS and almost like that bank that we talked about that Gerald picked up on and around what shop windows look like. We almost had a bank of what brands offer what POS then, yeah. because I think that would, if, now correct me if I'm wrong, and maybe a show of hands, if a brand was to really support with POS, would that influence your opinion about listing them? Absolutely, it would for me. Like we said, it's it's about taking all those pain points away. If they're giving me something to promote, like with the social media, you know, and it isn't just um, Vogel and Viridian that are good on social media, but they are both good on that too. They send me the stuff, I'm more likely to be promoting their products and getting their products in store. I do still have some of the smaller brands in my shop window. So for instance, if I'm gonna do something on sleep, um, I'm gonna have some sleepy tea in my window and I will have um, some magnesium in my window or some um, bath salts or something like that that follow a along the lines of whatever topic I'm doing. But in terms of my big posters, they are always going to be ones that look nice. And at the moment, Vogel and Viridian are winning. No, I appreciate that. Susan, I am coming to you, I assure you. Um, just, I just want to pick up on that point that you talked about. You, you said, and we all nodded, and you went, because I'm doing sleep, I put magnesium in the window. We all know why you've done that. Going back to thinking about that customer journey and the people that okay. aren't involved, then let me go on. So we put magnesium in the window, but we've got little A4 frames that we've got a black card in the frame and then in white we write on it. So magnesium will help with sleep or whatever we're whatever message we're putting out. So we do use our own little kind of little blackboards, if you like, um, in the window to explain why we've put certain products in. Unless that product, like Sleepy Tea, says Sleepy Tea. Then we, we just leave them be. And, it, and even then, some of those people going past the window won't really get it. Um, yeah. I always say, if, you, if you're doing your marketing in your shop window, if you think a 10-year-old would understand it, then you're on the on about the right path. Uh, and if you and if they wouldn't understand it, you've overcomplicated it for, them, for people. Um, we still get, and we don't know, there was a survey done by one of the brands recently uh, that when they said, can you name brands that are really good from a sustainable perspective, um Persil uh capsules came up because they had reduced the plastic in their boxes by 30 percent and that's what they and that's what most consumers said oh well done look at them haven't they done well whereas we all know that there's loads without even any plastic in them at all so it's thinking again about that customer journey of what do they know and what assumptions have they already made because, yeah, everybody wants to make that right sustainable change, but they see something like 30% less redu reduced from Lenore and go, wow, that's amazing. So it's around making sure that that, that links up. Um, Susie, I said I'd come to you and, and, and you're still there. Thank you for waiting. Um, what, what was it you mentioned? I'm hoping I'm not like the six-year-old child that's gone me, 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 and then forgotten what I wanted to say. <laughs> So Vogel and Viridian also have slightly different versions of, um, so let's say you've got something for sleep. So you can actually choose something that's more, you may have choice of two or three designs. So you can choose something that fits in more with the look that you want. That's one of the things. Also, um, we have um, natural trade brokers reps that come to our store. They are very, very useful. They are in touch with sort of CEOs of businesses um so BioD was a brand where I didn't like the refill big 20 litre canisters so I got camping canisters which had valves on um the rep saw this took the photographs of it and we went work backwards with BioD and now these 20 litre canisters with valves are everywhere I had a little hand in that so that was nice that you can use those reps and you can get right back to the sort of decision makers and, and you can get material from them bespoke for your store. So that's useful. So that's one of the things I've used. Also, Viridian, you've got your 25p returnable deposit on your empties. Collect those empties and pull them together. So if you've got something for sleep, 
you can, you know, use any returned bottles that you've had to you, which you can put in the window that are not going to be damaged by the sun, that you can kind of do a message. So I kind of do a, a triangle. So I've got my bigger stuff at the bottom and then I do at the top a tiny little shelf in the window, which then has my returned bottles that I've had back, which support my theme that the whole of my window is trying to say. So that's quite useful. I didn't know you were just saying those vows. I, I remember some of those complaints when I launched the 20 days for Faith in Nature. So um, I'm glad that that got sorted out because that was an issue. Um, and I think that's just another example of making your life easier at the same time as well, right? And, and I think it's also having that access. There are a lot of the, I know, I know Ruth and the team well uh, there. So getting that information back is really important. And it is just an important for the other side. So I'm really interested just to, I know we've, we've just got 20 minutes left. I want to do just a couple of minutes on what brands can do to help you and then, and then open it up to any questions at all, if that's okay. So I'm just going to ask, We've talked about having a, a group for shop windows and having the best look of shop windows. We've, we've talked about the potential of having a, having a working with, especially the Health Store UK uh, partners on what they might be able to offer and having a bank of that, that that gets disseminated out or used across social media. What would you find useful from brands? Because I listen to both sides. I listen to you, you, the, the stores and I listen to the brands and the brands are sitting there going, we'd love to work with shops. We love to get this, this stuff. We've got bespoke stuff we could work with them on. And you're saying we want more people to do that. So it's trying to find that medium and, and, and being able to, a lot of this is around trying to get brands in, the, in stores to work in harmony more together because everyone's trying to support and win together. What would, what would that look like for you? What would be helpful? What thoughts do you have that is a frustration or something that you would like to see more of? Debbie. So what Viridian do well is they've got a catalogue with everything in. So like I said, we've talked about the reps helping out, but they've got a catalogue with their POS in that I can flick through. So if you've got brands that are willing to give me POS, they need to tell me in a way that is easy for me to pick up. So whether that is when they're sending me my invoice that they include on that different POS that they do, um, or whether it's a, an email that they send, you know, do you know that you can get X, Y, and Z, but I need them to reach out to me because I haven't got time to reach out to them. Okay. That's a, that's a good point. Susie, I've got your hand as well. Um, and show what I've got yours. Um, that's a really good point. It's, and brands don't necessarily know have the details of how to get hold of people as well. What, what where, where do you see most about brands um, from, from that perspective? Where could they put something on to help you? <coughs> web orders. Pardon, Susie? Web orders on, on the website. When you're doing your orders, um, CLF, on some of their choices, you can actually get video clips so you can learn more about the brand. But if they had a section there where you could get sort of point of sale or marketing, maybe they do, but I've not found it. Um, okay. You know, I spend a lot of time now um, on Hunt's website, on CLF's website, uh, Infinity Foods website. So it'd be very easy for me to click a link to delve into what point of sale is available, bigger than leaflets for customers, because we've got... Um, sort of little rotating book stands with leaflets in. And it's an absolute nightmare. I'm obsessed with making sure that it's not all jumbled up, that it doesn't look horrible. Um, but it's very difficult. Customers don't self-select. So when we're advising, I make the staff hand a customer a leaflet just so that they remember everything they've been told about the product. So it's kind of getting us to remember to do that. Um, but leaflets get lost. It needs to be bigger. Yeah, I can see a lot of nodding heads at the same time as well. I know when we did a survey um, a few, even 12 months ago, leaflets also get thrown on the floor, they get thrown in the bin, they get knocked over. There's only so much shelf space. If you haven't got a nice rotating book stand, you've only got a certain amount of stuff and the customers knock them all over. So, yeah, not ideal. Um, but thanks. That's really, that's really interesting because we'll work with the wholesalers as well so we can feed that all back because I think 
that they they want to help and support. There's a there's a three level piece here with the with the brands, yourselves, and the wholesalers that can all start working more succinctly together. Um, who else had the hand up, Cheryl? Was it you? Yep, I did. Um, yeah, big size things made of cardboard, so they're not nothing plasticky or you know synthetic. Um, double sided because I hate having a big blank thing on the inside because we've got a nice you know the window isn't hasn't got a back to it you can look right through our window into the into the shop so I really want something double sided um, themes ideally rather than just a big pack of whatever tea or whatever it is that they've actually got a theme to the you know um, we're about to do a Chinese New Year window and um you know, it'd be nice to have some themed stuff from from the brands that do that. We've pulled together a number of Chinese themed products together for it and made a big red thing. So that, that'll look nice. But things that are around themes and um, yeah, hanging things does is good usually. But it's also nice to have things that stand that are freestanding so you can, you know, it's got more flexibility. Um, I'd also like to have. So I'm very demanding on as a customer. I'd also like to have like um to show what it's supposed to look like. So because I understand, I know there are. I've read things of Mary Porter's. I've read enough books about shop display. There's things about the golden triangles, the you know the color themes that pro prompt people. Red makes them buy more, and I don't know, yellow is a waste of time or something. You know something that really is a little brochure that says. The gold, the ten steps to the perfect window, kind of thing. If if the trade association could put that together, that I'd really with the examples, um, I'd like that. Um, um, I, I want to put a hurrah out as well, a shout out for Clipper. Clipper gave us a lot of stuff last year. We did a lovely Clipper window, and um, yeah, there was some nice stuff from them. Well, I will take that hurrah, uh, and I will let them know. Um, I um, we can definitely do a ten steps too. Uh, one of the things I didn't want to do in the presentation today was use big shop windows and Mary Porter's car style stuff. I wanted to keep it more for, for channel specific, but if that would be something that's of use, then I've half put that together already. Ten steps, so like a ten steps to uh, colours and bits and pieces as well. Thank you. Uh, Debbie, did you have your hand up? No? I think I've said everything <laughs> I need to say. Perfect. Apart from just thinking about a couple of others, Mugu, they're also really good. They also give props. We've had quite a few teddies and bunting and stuff like that. And Dr. Hauschka. I have big size Dr. Hauschka stuff, which has also been really good. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I also find the Hauschka stuff quite frustrating. We get the big ones, but they're not, the messaging's not strong. It tends to just, you know, it's not. I don't know. It's not. I don't feel it's punchy enough the Hauschka stuff, but I do like their great big things. I agree with you. Yeah. Okay. Last quarter of an hour left of this. All I want to do is just open it up now to any questions at all. Um, I'll just make sure that we cover off any questions that anybody has and any the knowledge that we have here at all. So, if anyone has any questions or any thoughts or anything that's come up, now is a time to ask. If you don't want to do it, you can put a message in the chat. Question in the chat. Oh, I've got a question. Yes, sure. Um, so we've got five windows in our shop. We're on a corner and they're extremely difficult to get into. So they've all got shelving in front of them. So they've all got a back in. So you have to literally climb into the window. We're in a very old building. So you have to like duck down. It's very awkward. So um, there's two particular windows, but you get through to them in the same sort of um, little entrance that we really struggle with and we've sort of created it into like a therapist's um, advertising window where we put posters and things in there to ad advertise the treatments that we offer which um, is good but I just wondered if you had any ideas of what like more permanent things that you can put in windows that can hang around for a while so that you don't have to clamber in when it's really awkward and change it all the time um well any services that you provide are, are would be a great one i think if you utilize windows like that and i'm going to come to the rest of the people in a second on, on any kind of uh, i can see a couple of people that think i've got some ideas but i would look at um that generic question that you're asking of people or trying to engage people with um so obviously what your main things are that you sell within your store um and then that's that kind of resounding thing what's the thing you want your store to be known for most 
those are the things that you can consistently have in those windows, whether it is branded, whether it is more generic uh, messaging, um, or, or whether it is more around targeting specifically, you're doing a window specifically for perhaps new customers and one for existing customers. So there's a different side of messaging on both. If you want to keep something in there a bit more, then perhaps you can change it a couple of times a year when, you know, the, the spiders have had their bit and their say and stuff mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. You can't go in there every now and then. Um, Cheryl, you seem yeah. to, I think you've got some. I do, I do. I'm excited about this because, Sean, I know that shop at Hartford. That was the first health food store I ever worked yeah. in. Yeah. When I was 21 years old. So I know these windows really well. You know my yeah, pain. A lot of sunshine and it's mainly cars coming past rather than footfall. Yeah. But I, uh, what we've done in our shop at the back, we've put in a, a what looks like a chalkboard. So it looks like it's fresh. It looks like, oh, somebody probably only wrote that last week. But it's mm -hmm. core messages, you know, talk about refills, fair trade fashion, you know, uh, you know, the cafe. And, you know, we list everything down. But it, because it's on a black and white chalkboard, I think it looks fresher than a than a, especially when you've got sun on it all the time. It looks like it's something you might have been changing every week. So yeah, um, that that I think might work there. I know the pain of those windows. I know your pain. <laughs> it's all, honestly, it's awful. Yeah. But no, I like that idea of sort of almost advertising what you can find in store without having to put actual products and brands in there. Yeah. You're almost listing what you. We've lost the sound for you there, Sean. Oh, can you hear oh, me now? You're back, you're back, you're back. Yeah, no, yeah, I was just saying that I really like that idea of sort of listing what, what um, is on offer in the store um, and not just like the products in general. Oh, I'll, so I'll take a photograph of our one and I'll put it into this database so you can see, you know, for what, what you, we've got our logo and then all the list of what we're doing there. there Perfect, going. thank you. I was going to say the same as Cheryl with a chalkboard, but maybe have the questions on it. So one of our chalkboards that's out on the street, we don't change very often. And it says, are you suffering from lack of sleep, menopause or, you know, and list them out. And it's that yeah. that brings people in to say, oh, yeah, I saw your chalkboard. And yes, I am getting up in the night to go for a pee or yes, I'm really suffering with sleep. So even if you listed maybe six or seven questions on a chalkboard that gets yep. me thinking yes that is what I'm suffering from and yeah that's great that often yeah that's a really good idea thank you both of you I really love that I think also thank just you. when you're doing that as well remember if you've just said that most of your footfall there is by car and not by foot that you're doing it at the right height and you're doing it at the right size that can be mm -hmm. Car. So maybe even take that trip past in a car so that you mm -hmm. actually experience it yourself. And go, Can I read that? Because if you can't, they can't. Yeah. No, brilliant. Debbie, Thanks, guys. Um, Debbie, I love the external. You actually have something. I know A boards, we've got A boards and they're a bit, you know, but do you put any booklets or any literature outside during the day in the summer? So we don't. Um, we've got three chalkboards now that we stick out. One of them is a bit further down because where we are, we're right at the top of our high street yeah. and we've got like a road that separates. And we found that a lot of people will get as far as the road and go, oh, there's nothing else up there. So at that junction, that's where we've put our chalkboard that says, do you suffer from? And then list the questions. And then the other side of that, We've got the name of our shop and then we've got refills and then our catchphrase is more than just muesli. And so we kind of got that on the, the bottom of it with all of the other things that, that we sell. So we hardly change that um, only when it's starting to look a bit grubby, then we'll paint it over and, and do something similar. But I don't tend to put leaflets outside. It's disruptive yeah. as well, an A board as well. It takes the eye from the pavement and it brings it brings your eyesight to something. It's all about gaining that eye vision. Someone said earlier on they've got a, a, a store that's down an alleyway, um, so they've got to work a little harder to try and attract those people in, and that A board and options like that will, will definitely help and support it. We also have leaflet dispensers for A4 sized and A5 size, which are kind of little flip-top plastic, uh, weatherproof, and um, find that really useful when you get the freebie magazines. I've got no space to put them. The counter isn't the place, but outside is. Do you leave them out outside all night? Yes. You do. Uh, do you don't? Do you, do you don't get any? Um, you know, vandalism. No, I might give that a go. Thank you. Yeah. 
Um, it's they've kind of they're they're weatherproofed um, kind of dispensers, um, and it's got like a rubber hinge that's all kind of you know secure. So I find that sometimes, and I can also um, uh, leaflet insert into any of the magazines any specific thing that I want to draw people's attention to in the shop as well. That's interesting. I know a couple of people that have got question had questions about put, leaving stuff outside as well. So it's interesting to hear your take on that as well. Um, I think it depends where you're situated. You know, where we're in a fairly parochial uh, town. Um, I'm up an alleyway, so yes, I've got kids that kind of drink at the end of the alleyway because it's a covered bulkhead. But they mostly just leave their rubbish and bottles um, and don't generally vandalise. So situate the leaflets under a light or where there's more vision if somebody is trying to vandalize they'll get seen they the the troublemakers tend to seek the dark so they're probably not ones for the sleep products then so is it no. that what you're <laughs> got, got that. okay has anyone else got any tips any thoughts anything that's worked any questions uh jim you have one this is a bit of a random one, um, and I've just, it was just something I thought of, that years and years ago, when I was a very young foundation art student, uh, it is going back a while, um, I remember a neighbour of ours who ran a travel agency asked me to design and make something for their window, which they used for a long time, and I didn't get paid a lot of money, and I don't know whether anyone's ever worked with a local art school, maybe a school uh, kind of engaging with someone who so, can do something really interesting that doesn't cost you too much. I don't know whether that is just kind of, oh, there we go. <laughs> so my daughter studying graphics um, and fine art. So uh -huh. I gave her a commission to rebrand my store. So she's changed all the colouring, the logo, which we haven't rolled out yet. We introduced EPOS in October and the uh, receipt now has our new logo on it, which she designed. So I feel that I could have probably gone to the school and said, well, look, I've got a commission. How about? Because they they have that um, where they need to rebrand a tired business as part of a, a brief for one of their assignments. So they could actually make it something physical if they wanted to. So I should um, that that could have legs. I think, it, I think it definitely does have legs, Jim. When I was at Faith in Nature, as I said, we we commissioned local artists to um, paint the shop fronts of several stores, uh, and it was pretty inexpensive. But also the universities, you're right, the colleges, also college students will have those as well. I know two brands that have budget for anybody that would like their window done, uh, that they have budget to do that as well uh, for a number of stores. So I know there are a few brands that are looking to do that at the same Which time. Which brands? Which brands, Dave? If anybody offline, I was going to say, if anybody <laughs> wants to that information on it, I don't want every, I can't give away to everybody. Um, but also, it, it, and also, you need to have them listed as well. So there's a further conversation. But um, anybody that is um, interested in that, then drop me a line and I can I can pick up with them offline on, on bits and pieces as well for different brands that have got different things before the library comes up because I don't like to wait until things happen. I like to make things happen. So we'll try and do that at the same time as well. Um, and if anyone's got any list of brands that they would love to get something from and haven't, I've got ins to most of the brands that are around at the moment as well and we can have conversations and we have I'm facilitating this kind of conversation with brands as well and trying to create those forums and then bringing everybody together hopefully um, at NOPE and other events that we can start to collaborate a lot more as well and create that library because this brands are like where's the library of shops that want this help and support because we don't know where they are so it's it's bridging those gaps as well because there is definite um want and desire from both sides to support time for one more question before we wrap up debbie i know it's always me asking the questions but this was something you um had about the 2024 trends i would love to know what they are i don't know if you can email that over to us uh yeah i've got the slides on here i mean to, to, to be fair the first one for the main trends is obviously around sustainable consumption that we've kind of jumped on already um we also looked at the food and drink side and, and what areas of wellness are um technology was another one that was in there 
but then also we've talked about those four main areas that, that are the sleep the menopause the brain fog and the digestion they are the biggest four trends that we're seeing anywhere at the moment so uh and also a little bit of a little bit of information is very dangerous for consumers so everybody now thinks they're experts in this and they're not so have a have a look at at least those four areas put a generic search in take your blinkers off for a second and cringe at all the information that's terrible that's out there but remember when we talked about putting yourself in the position of that potential customer that's walking past your shop that is what they're seeing that is what they're believing so how can you utilize that information to actually to your advantage and then be able to start that conversation with have you been told this actually there's much more benefit or you know we, the buzzword of burnout for example uh no one really thinks they know they one thinks they know what it means no one really does uh no one knows how to or what to the symptoms are they just use that terminology but how can you then use terminology that will gain that will gain people's eye because that's the words that are being used and then you can facilitate a more structured conversation around products that you know will actually help and support them Fabulous, thank you. But yes, I will send all the slides around, including those last little ones on there. I thought facilitating the Q&A was actually a little more important at this stage. So it was there if we needed it. But as I said, I've got no ego, so I don't have to go through all my slides, but um, even though I've put so much effort into some of them. Um, but I will get them all shared around with the video and stuff as well, so the link will all be there at the same time. Um, uh, just before we wrap up, has anyone got one final question at all? Anyone got any thoughts or anything at all before I say... Thank you to people. Just massive gratitude, Dave. Very thought provoking. Lots of notes, lots of asterisks, and highlighter pen being used here. So oh, um, every day is a school day. Thank you very much. Um, Tess, Tessa, have you got a question? Um, I've just, I, I'm logging in from Ireland actually. And so just thanks for extending the invitation overseas. It's been mm. interesting. Wonderful. It's good. It's good. And thank you for coming on board and, and, and taking um, notes. It'd be, it'd be really good to get feedback on this as well. If there's anything that you would like to have seen that you didn't see, this is these sessions are for you. Uh, these sessions are to help and support. So any feedback to make the sessions better, as I said, there's no ego here. We just want to make sure that you've got the best session possible. Uh, so if there's things that we can do or you'd like to see, then please let me know. Um, my email address is dave at takeongoliath.com. Uh, or you have uh, Avril's email address and the address of uh, Health Store UK's. Um, but we all we want to do is make these sessions as important and as beneficial to you as possible. Dave, do we have a specific one for next month? Do we know what it's going to be? Well, I was just about to say uh, I'm sitting. We're sitting down on the sixth and planning out the next few. Um, <laughs> and it'll be really interesting. But the last question that I have before I let everybody go, and I'm conscious of the time, is. We, we, we came up with this one and the last one because of requests. We want it to be valuable to you. What would you like? Is there any subject that you would like to hear about? I have a few that I would like to share, but I would like to hear from you first as to what you think would be a valuable use of your time in this session. I can't deny I liked it. I, what I usually ask retailers is what's worked. What's worked? What's been your most successful activity that you've done? And, you know, sharing best practice in that way. I, I enjoy that. I, I, I have a best a practice broad. one down or something similar with regards to sort of sharing sharing successes or, or sort of a, a Wednesday wins session mm -hmm. um, where we can all discuss just one thing and highlight and bring something to share because I'm, I'm acutely aware that we're all over uh, land and sea you now and uh, you know we want to be able to utilize some of the things that we might not know we only know what we know so that'd be really important has anyone else got any thoughts at all i don't worry we're wrong i can fill these um and um and, and the health store uk has also got a couple of ideas as well we think will be really beneficial but if you have any that would be great mm -hmm. also if you'd like anybody else on here my tone is enough for anybody for an hour and a half so like tony tony robbins you get tony robbins first <laughs> sorry i know tony robbins i have an ego show <laughs> um, no you know i will come to whatever you i'd come to you opening an envelope dave you're fascinating and uh, always got great ideas so you know whatever you come up with i'm here for you and thank you cheryl and you're checking the most as always so i appreciate that we, but we i do have been, around, as, 
I do just yeah. around general communication. I run workshops on my other side of my coaching business about uh, time management and uh, communication, accountability, um, looking at those elements. So maybe a, one of those kind of sessions might be an interesting one as well, rather than everything just about initially business-wise from, from retail side. Would that be of interest? Mm. Sounds mm. good. People management might be good. Mm -hmm. um, I've got quite a team and sometimes that can be quite tricky. Yeah, leadership. We've got a leadership course that we, we I could put down into into this session for sure. Okay. Um, thank you, for everybody, for your input. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, as I said, I hope you found it beneficial. I will be sending this video and the presentation to Avril, who will disseminate it through everybody that signed on. Uh, and it'll be available. There'll be links online for it as well. As I said, if you want anything quicker than that, Dave at takeongoliath.com. Come to me with any questions that you might have thought about, but you didn't want to ask anybody in front of everybody else. We've all been there. Nothing to be ashamed of in the slightest. So please feel free to do email me and ask those questions. Thank you again, everybody, for attending. Have a wonderful evening, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Amazing. Thanks, Dave. Bye, everyone. 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 Bye,